Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. And also, welcome back to my Linux Crash Course series. I'm really proud of this series. It's actually the longest running tutorial series on this entire channel at this point. There's a ginormous number of episodes in this series, but thankfully, you can watch them in any order, because unless I tell you otherwise, each episode is standalone. That way, you can consume whichever episodes you need to consume in order to fill the gaps in your Linux learning. In this episode in particular, what we're going to do is cover the journal CTL command. But what is it? Well, with journalctl, we can view important log files while we troubleshoot something, and we can view all of our logs all at once, or we can focus in on a particular service. We can even view log files in almost real time, which is really cool. It's extremely useful, and what we're going to do is learn the basics of journalctl as well as some of its most important options in this video. And you know what? I can't wait to get started. So if you're ready to get started, well, I'm ready to get started, so let's get right into it right now. First, I want to talk a bit more about what journal CTL is, as well as how it fits in within the Linux ecosystem. The journal CTL command is most used by system administrators, as well as anyone else that uses Linux for anything beyond the basics. Within each Linux system is a ton of background processes that do various things. These services range from those that enable you to playback audio to those that enable server-related services, such as OpenSSH and Apache. And while they do their thing, the output information into log files. Administrators can inspect these log files to ensure that everything is running properly, and logs can be indispensable when dealing with situations like a breach and trying to figure out what's been changed on the system. Sometimes we'll need to interact with services to restart them, such as restarting an Apache web server as we change configuration. The journal CTL command can be used to view the log files that services produce, and it also gives us some additional flexibility such as being able to follow logs to see the latest information as it's written. We could view system logs, logs for services, and we could even hone in on logs that are produced by a particular user. But before we go any further, I wanted to bring up the fact that not every distribution has the journal CTL command available. Most do nowadays, but journal CTL is a command that's only useful if you're using a distribution that features systemd. For distributions that do support it, the journal CTL command will be available by default. For those of you that have no idea what I'm talking about when I mention systemd, it's a special process that's known as an init system. To keep the explanation simple, an init system is a special process that controls all other processes. Most distributions nowadays have switched to systemd and by association also include the journal CTL command. If your distribution doesn't use systemd, then this entire video won't apply to you. Still, I recommend that you learn the basics, because even if the journal CTL command isn't available, it's only a matter of time before you end up using a distro that includes it. When it comes to the more popular distributions such as Arch Linux, Ubuntu, Debian, Linux Mint, Fedora, Rocky, Alma Linux OS, OpenSUSE, and many others all use systemd as their init system, which means the journal CTL command applies. For those of you that are just starting out, to summarize this, Journal CTL is part of systemd, and most distributions use systemd to control processes. On any system that uses systemd, which is most distributions, the journal CTL command is automatically available to you without you needing to install anything, and it's the primary method for viewing log files going forward. I could go into much more detail about systemd, but I won't, because I've already created a video that does exactly that. So if you want to learn more about systemd itself, then check out that video. In fact, I'll leave a card for it right about here. Now with all of that out of the way, let's get started with journal CTL. The most basic usage is to run journal CTL by itself with no options. Now this isn't the most useful example, but it's a great place to start. If we enter journal CTL by itself, we'll see log output for just about everything. Without providing any options, we're not instructing journal CTL to narrow the output down to anything, so it just gives us everything. We could use the up and down arrows to scroll through the output, and the page up and page down buttons also work as well. When we're finished, we can press Q on the keyboard to return back to the command prompt. Now let's look at our first option with the journal CTL command. So I'll enter journal CTL just like before, but what I'll do is add the dash F option, which is short for follow. 
I'll press enter and let's see what happens. With follow mode active, we don't have to scroll through the output, it'll scroll automatically as new log entries are being created. Again, this isn't all that useful either, because unless we narrow down what we want to look at, we're just going to see a bunch of information that's not relevant to whatever it is we're looking for. So what I'll do is press Ctrl and C to break out of follow mode. So let's make this a bit more interesting, and by doing so, if you're confused about anything from my earlier description, it'll probably clear up shortly. So what we're going to do right now is focus in on a particular service. And to give us something to focus in on, what I'll do is install Apache. Now right now I'm on a Fedora system, so what I'm going to do is run sudo dnf install, and then the package name is httpd, just like that. Now if you're running on a Debian system, or a system that's based on Debian, you can run something like sudo apt install apache2 to accomplish the same thing. Or you can install nothing if you have a service that you want to inspect. We'll be able to use that later as I show you the examples. But I'm going to install this right now, so that way I'll have something to focus in on. So I'll press enter. In my case, it's already installed, so I didn't actually have to do anything. Anyway, what I'm going to do right now is make sure that Apache is running. So to check that, I'll run systemctl, status, and then httpd, just like that. So in my case, it wasn't running. So what I'm going to do is start it up right now. As I talked about in my systemd video, we could do that by running sudo systemctl start and then the name of the service. In my case, I want to start httpd, so I'll just run that command right there and press enter. Now what I'm going to do is check the status again. And we can see that the status is active and running. That means that I have a web server running on this computer. Now the thing is, starting this service has nothing to do with journal CTL. I just wanted to have something to inspect. All the commands that I showed you just now in regard to the system CTL command, those are all included in my systemd video, and that's the last time I'll mention it, but that's definitely a video that you don't want to miss. Anyway, I'll press Q to break out of the status screen and clear the screen, and let's continue. So anyway, let's bring this back to journal CTL. Earlier, we were using journal CTL without specifying anything we wanted to look at. Now that we've installed Apache, we do have something to focus on. So we could view log output specific to Apache with the following command. I'll type journal CTL dash U and then the name of the process, in my case again, HTTPD. And right now we are seeing actual log entries specific to Apache. Dash U, which is short for unit, tells journal CTL that we want to focus in on a particular thing, and then I typed HTTPD, which is what I want to focus on. Now I just started this up, so there's only four lines of output here, but the important point to note is that I was able to focus just on this service, which is a lot better than seeing all of the information all at once, like we see when we run journal CTL with no options at all. So again, that was journal CTL. Dash U, and then the name of the unit, or service. Now again, I only have four lines of output here, so there's nothing to scroll. But if I did see quite a few lines, for example, just like with the journal CTL command by itself, I could press the up or down arrows to scroll the output, as well as page up and page down. Anyway, what I'll do is press Q to break out of this and return to the command prompt. Anyway, earlier I showed you a variation of the journal CTL command, I use the dash F option, and that allows me to follow all output. Now what I'm going to do is combine that with the U option. So I'll also type dash U, and then again, the name of the service. And what we're doing here is we're combining two options together. I'm telling journal CTL that I want to enable follow mode, and I also want to focus on HTTPD. Now again, there's not really much to see here, but what I'll do right now to make it a bit more interesting is restart the service. In fact, I'll do it a few more times. Now what I'll do is recall the previous journal CTL command, this one right here, and press enter. And you can see right here that we have several more lines. Anytime I restarted the service, you could see that it logged an entry for the restarting of that service. You see server configured, 
start at httpd.service, stopping, and then starting, and so on. So I restarted it multiple times, and you see all of that in the log entries. Now I'm going to show you guys a more useful example. Quite a few of you will have OpenSSH installed. After all, it is the primary method for remote management in Linux. So what I'm going to do is type journalctl dash f for follow mode dash u for unit and this time I'm going to use sshd for the name of the unit that I want to inspect. I'll press enter and right here we can see that the SSH server is listening. So as you can see right here we are watching the output of the open SSH server. On another machine I'm going to try to connect to this one. So watching the output, what I'll do is just type an SSH command into another computer, and then we'll be able to see what happens to the log file as I do so. And check that out. As I connected to this computer over SSH, you can see immediately that there is new information written to the log file. Now to make this even more interesting. In this case, I enabled password authentication over SSH, which is something that you probably should never do, but I wanted to show you as an example. After I disabled password authentication, what I did was type the wrong password on purpose multiple times. Each time I attempted, you could see that output was shown while watching the output of SSH. And actually, this is a very common example. Suppose you have someone that asks you why they're not able to access a server via SSH. What you could do is watch the SSH log and have them try again. And as you're watching them attempt to log in, you'll see output that might explain the problem that the person is experiencing. In this case, the wrong password was being entered, like I mentioned. Let's see some additional useful options that we can use with Journal CTL. And the first of these is among a handful of examples that'll show you how to narrow down log output from a particular point in time. What I'll do is type Journal CTL, and then dash dash sense. And inside the double quotes, what I'll do is type a date string. So what I'll do is type 2025-03 for March and 25 for the day. And then what I'll do is input a random time, let's say noon, for example. And here's the completed command. Journal CTL dash dash since, and then a date string in double quotes like you see right here. You can, of course, adjust this for whatever time period you want to start the output from, but this is good enough for me, so I'll press enter. And as you can see, it does exactly that. The very first entry on the top of the screen here is from March 25th at noon. So I was able to start the output from that date. And again, here's the command. It's definitely a very useful one to add to your notes. And this might be useful if you are investigating an issue that happened within a particular window of time, so that way you can avoid looking at log entries that are older than the event that you're investigating. So in this example, if something happened around noon on this date, then I don't have to worry about what came before since it's not relevant to what I'm looking for. And similarly, what we could do is type journal CTL dash U for unit, and I'll investigate SSHD just like I did before dash dash since, and then in double quotes, I could place a date string. But I'm going to simplify this one quite a bit. What I'm going to do for a date string is type yesterday, just like that. So if I knew something happened since yesterday, I may not know the exact time, but I know that it happened since yesterday, then what I could do is type literally yesterday. You can see the difference immediately because before the very first entry was from March 25th, now, the very first entry was, well, yesterday. I'm recording this video on March 25th, but since I used dash dash since yesterday, it's showing me information from March 24th. And as you can see, it was literally as simple as that. And a little bit more interesting, what I'm going to do is add another date string, but this one is going to be a little bit more specific. And in this example, I want to see log entries that start since about one hour ago. So I could literally type one hour ago for the date string here. So I'll press enter, and we see everything that happened since one hour ago. And we also see the failed attempts within SSH. We also see some other log entries here as well. 
But all I had to do was type one hour ago if I know that the issue happened within the previous hour. And it lets you get creative. What I recommend that you do is just play around with this option, play around with the various date string formats that I gave you, and try investigating another service. Continuing, let's see an example of viewing log output generated by a particular user. Perhaps you see a user account on your system that you're not familiar with and you want to find out what exactly it's doing. First, we'll need to find the user ID or UID of the user that we're curious about. And I'll use mine as an example. I could type ID dash U and then the username. In this case, you can see that my UID is 1000. That's very typical for the first user account that's created on a system. This is my laptop after all, so that's going to be my user account, but you can go ahead and replace the username here, the username that I used, with whatever you might be curious about. But what does that have to do with journal CTL? Well, like I mentioned, what we're going to do is view log output from a particular user. So we'll type journal CTL, underscore, and then UID in caps, equal sign, and then we'll add the UID for the user. In my case, it was 1000, so that's what I'll enter, and I'll press enter. In this case, we're seeing log output that is specific to my user account. Again, we can press page up or page down. That'll help us scroll through the output here. Since my user account is on a laptop that has a full desktop environment running, we're seeing quite a few things here. In most cases, you would use a system user, like a user for HTTPD, SSH, or something like that. But you can inspect any user that's on your system. And if you wanted to know how to do that, well, now you know. Now, before I close out the video, I wanted to show you a trick that might come in handy if logging starts to take up too much space. Over time, depending on how your distribution is configured, SystemD journals can take up quite a bit of space. Luckily for us, we could choose an arbitrary size and crunch journal entries down to just that size. Now, obviously, you want to be careful before executing a command like this. You don't have to follow along with me. You could just take notes. If you are on a company server, for example, you probably don't want to remove log files. However, if the system is owned by you, well, it doesn't matter. Either way, you could follow along with me if you have permission to do so, or you could simply take notes. So what I'll do is type sudo because I'm going to be making changes to the entire system, and then journal ctl, dash dash vacuum, dash size, and what I'm going to do is set that to 500 megabytes. Now again, you should only run a command like this if you have permission to do so. On company servers, they generally want to hang on to log files for a specific amount of time, especially when it comes into retention requirements. Since this is my personal laptop, I don't really care, so I'm going to enter this command right here, and let's see what happens. Now on the bottom, you can see that 166 megabytes of archived journals were deleted. So I was able to clear out excess log files with the journal ctl dash dash vacuum dash size command. And again, here's the command. Be sure to adjust that to whatever size you want it to be. And again, make sure you are in compliance with your company's retention policies before you enter a command like this, but at some point, you most certainly are going to run into a situation eventually where you might have to clear log files, especially if your storage volume starts to become full. And there's our video. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Linux Crash Course series. I know I had a ton of fun producing it for you guys. And if you like this video, then be sure to click the like button to let YouTube know so that way we'll see more Linux related content on YouTube. That would be awesome. In the meantime, though, be sure to subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I'll see you in the next video.